You may be surprised to hear that prayer isn't just for religious people. In fact, prayer can have a powerful impact on your life and create positive changes almost immediately. But if prayer can be a powerful tool for spiritual people who aren't religious, how exactly do we pray? In this video, you'll learn what prayer is from a spiritual perspective and how different that is from religion, then the top two reasons why we should pray and the power that prayer can have in our lives, and then how to pray. I'm going to share a four-step technique to help spiritual people take advantage of prayer in their daily lives. Coming up! Hello, beautiful soul. This is Christina Lopes, the Heart Alchemist, here to help you open your heart, heal your past, and live with purpose. If you're new to my videos, click on that subscribe button and also on the bell so you get notified as soon as I publish new content. And don't forget to follow me over on Instagram where I share weekly tips and advice that you won't find here on YouTube. Also, a quick reminder that we have free supplemental workbooks with all of our videos. Click on the link below to download that workbook and help you work through the content of this video. On to part one of the video, what is prayer? Okay, so a lot of times when we start talking about prayer, it makes some people feel very uncomfortable because prayer is often associated with religion. And so if you're spiritual and non-religious, uh, sometimes the concept of prayer can be um, a little bit, can make you feel a little bit uncomfortable. But in this video, I want to go into prayer from a spirituality perspective, and that's the type of prayer that we're talking about for this video. But to clear things up, let's go into the definition of prayer from a religious perspective, and then we'll get into the definition of prayer uh, from a spiritual perspective. Okay, so from a religious perspective, Prayer is an invocation, uh, an act of supplication or intercession directed towards God. Okay, so religiously, when people pray, they're generally doing that as a way to ask God, uh, and usually God is depicted as a male figure way, way up in the sky. God is viewed as a, as a more judgmental figure in religions, okay? Okay. And so prayer coming from that uh, prism is more asking for that God that's way up in the sky, asking for that God to intercede in a person's, in a person's life. That's generally how prayer um, is talked about within the religious context. But one main energy characteristic of prayer that's really important for us to talk about when it comes to religion versus spirituality, because that's the key difference between prayer and these two traditions, is the, from a religious perspective, prayer, when someone practices prayer within the confines of religion, generally there is a sense of powerlessness that comes from prayer within religion, okay? Powerlessness. Now, to understand why people have this sense of powerlessness within religion, we need to go back and understand that the inception of religion on the planet was really put together as a system of control. And so in religions, people are controlled, and generally the storyline that was set up in religion is that you have a god way up there, it's usually a male figure, a very judgmental god, and us humans down here, we're very sinful and we're not deserving of God. And so we have to pray and we have to get down on our knees and we have to uh, pray from this place of powerlessness. Well, powerlessness was then imbued in religion because then religion would come in and they would serve as the position themselves as the intermediary between the little old sinful person and God. And you can only get to God through uh, the religion itself, okay, or through representatives of the religion. And so if you understand a little bit about religion and how it was set up as a system of control on the planet, then you can understand that from a religious perspective, the last thing a religion wants is for people to, be, to feel powerful within religion and to be sovereign. Because if you are powerful enough to recognize that you don't need an intermediary between yourself and the source that created you, that you can talk to that source directly and you don't need any intermediary, then religion would cease to, uh, to have any meaning at all. And so within the systems of control of religion, there is this imbuing of powerlessness, of victim consciousness on people who are religious in order to keep them within those confined um, kind of systems of power that are religions, all right? So that's a general story around where the powerlessness comes from within religion. But now let's go into spirituality. I want to go into the definition of the spiritual definition of prayer, and we can talk about a little bit of the differences in energy that set these two apart, 
So within spirituality, here's the spiritual definition. Within spirituality, prayer is a conversation with the universe. Okay, so this is the simplest way for, we to, for us to talk about prayer within spirituality. It's a conversation between you and the universe, you and God, if you like to use that term, you and source energy, you and creator. It's that conversation, the connection that you are having with the creator or with the universe. All right. Now, here what's happening is that now the energy is different. Okay. Now, the energy is different, first of all, because you have to remember that spirituality is a path of, of experience. Is a, it's a path of direct experience. Okay. So a spiritual person doesn't do well with someone outside telling them what to do, as often happens in religion. Okay. So spirituality is a path of direct experience of the divine direct experience. So a spiritual person has to experience God or source within themselves. Spirituality also is a path, path of power and sovereignty. So prayer within the, the, the understanding of spirituality, prayer is seen as a conversation that I'm having with my creator, but not from that place of powerlessness. So I'm having the conversation with my creator, but I'm not thinking of myself as a sinful, lowly human that needs to repent or needs to pray or needs to do this and that and the other, otherwise I'll go to hell. Okay, that's the story that we bring from religions. In spirituality, no, in spirituality, it's just this beautiful conversation of equals. It's a beautiful conversation. I like to think of prayer within spirituality as the same energy as you going out to coffee with a friend. Okay. So if you go out to coffee with a friend, you just have this beautiful, beautiful connection, this beautiful energy, and you're, you're conversing, you're talking to each other like friends. And that's how I see prayer and spirituality, very different from the way prayer is set up in religion, where there's a hierarchy of a really low sinful human and a godly God. And there's an intermediary that has to occur between one and the other, because a According to religion, you can't access God yourself. You have to go through someone, through a prophet, through a, through a religion, or through some kind of path. Okay, and so now you see that prayer. This is super important because this is going to be one of the key foundations of using prayer in your daily life as a spiritual person. You're stepping into your power as this sovereign, beautiful, multi-dimensional, powerful being that streams directly, directly from that source energy, and there. There's never anything that you will be able to do to cut off that unconditional love. In spirituality, there's no such thing as a judgmental God. There is no such thing as a judgmental God. So there's, you don't have to step through hoops to be loved by your creator. You already are unconditionally. And in spirituality, that is recognized, okay? But the power, the personal power, being able to pray from a position of power, not powerlessness, is the key difference between prayer and spirituality and prayer and religion. On to part two of the video, why we should pray. Okay, so now that we've kind of cleaned up the energy around what prayer is from a spiritual perspective, because that's what's important to us for this video. Now that we've cleaned up that energy, let's get into why we should pray, why we should pray sometimes every day. There are two main reasons why prayer is really important in our lives, uh, non-religious spiritual people. The first one is to nurture connection. Oh, this is one of my favorite ways to nurture connection. Prayer gives you that direct connection with the source of all things, with the spirit world, with your creator, with the universe. And the more that you nurture that connection, the more you will be aligned with your soul truths because your soul truth, your soul energy is right there with the creator, right there. It's only when we start to, when we come down here and we have these, these filters of the ego and we have all the human baggage associated that we sometimes forget where we come from and who we are. And so prayer is this beautiful way of just nurturing my connection to my source so that that connection is always present no matter what I'm doing in my life. But it's important for me to really point out, and I'll leave here, you know, uh, an extra, an extra little nugget here. It's important for me to point out that this nurturing of connection means that you are more aligned with who you are. Okay. So when I pray, I'm nurturing my connection to my creator. And when I nurture my connection to my creator, I'm immediately more aligned and more aligned to me means I'm more aligned with my soul truths. I'm more aligned with my path. I'm more aligned with my mission. I'm more aligned in general. 
okay? And that's how I see prayer. When I pray, I just feel so completely aligned and connected to my source. And in the in that space of feeling connected to my source, I have access to more intuition, to answers, to signs. I have access to a lot more information, not to mention that prayer is a great way in that connection to source energy. Prayer also allows you to stream through and feel that unconditional love that the source is always feeling for you. Okay, so that's the first reason. The second reason that why we should pray is that it's going to amplify energy. Okay, so that's another favorite reason why we should pray every day. What prayer does, prayer focuses your attention. Okay, remember this. Prayer is a form of focus. Okay, remember this mantra. Prayer is a form of focus. When I'm praying, I'm literally, I have my heart and my mind aligned in a singular focus, whatever prayer I happen to be reciting in that moment, okay, or whatever conversation I happen to be having with the divine. I am totally focused on that. And when I am focused on something, the energy of that thing expands, okay? What I put my focus on expands. And that's true for prayer also. So when I'm praying for something, when I'm praying for a particular topic, I am immediately concentrating energy and that energy is expanding. It's getting bigger. It's getting more powerful. It's getting more powerful, okay? This is why a lot of times prayer circles are miraculous for people. So when we, a lot of times, if you've heard of prayer circles, when a person sets up a prayer circle for someone who's sick or for someone who's going through a challenge, and we have multiple people at the same time praying, those multiple people are creating this enormous vortex of energy, okay? And that vortex of energy actually helps that person that we are praying for in very, very meaningful ways, okay? There's also a lot of scientific reasons research already around the, the outcomes of people who pray. So people who pray and who receive prayers from others have higher health outcomes when, they, when it has to do with hospitalizations and disease and surgeries and stuff like that. So it's really interesting. You can see how the energy is at play here, all right? So this amplification of energy is another great reason for you to pray and incorporate prayer in your daily life. On to part three, how to pray. Okay, so now that we've gone over the importance of prayer, um, why we should pray, let's get into a simple four-step technique that I want to share with you today that's very easy, but it'll help you pray with more effectiveness. Okay, so the first step is to stand in your power. All right, this is, oh, this is ding, ding. This is... Is, this is the mother of all of this technique, okay? Stand in your power. We've already, we already know that that's the main difference between praying within religions and praying in spirituality. When you stand in your power, you are bringing to you the multidimensional energy, the fullness of who you are versus praying from a position of powerlessness, okay? When you pray from power, you are really praying from your true nature. When you pray from powerlessness, you're praying from a false self, right? Because you are not powerless. You are never powerless. You are this multidimensional, enormous being that streams straight from source energy into this body, okay? So you're not powerless. You're not a victim. You're not small. You're not meaningless, nothing like that. And when you come into your power, it makes prayer. Now you're praying from your true self and you're praying with a lot more power because when I'm praying from a position of power, the outcome is different and the energy around it is different. All right. But let me add a little extra nugget here on the importance of this. Okay. So my guides for years, I've had this conversation with my guides and they've been stressing the importance of prayer with power. And what they've been saying is that they, they're they standing in the sidelines, spirit guides are standing in the sidelines to help us. But when we pray from a position of powerlessness, we are less likely to be assisted in that moment. And at first I thought, that's really weird. Why would you do that? Why would you not assist us from a position of powerlessness? And then I understood what they were trying to say. So our spirit guides are here to help us. And part of helping us is helping us come into our our power. So if they were to reach out to us when we were in a position of powerlessness, they could actually be enabling our powerlessness. They would be enabling our belief that we're small and powerless and we need to be rescued by these divine spirit beings or by God itself. Okay. And so they have been very, very stressed in this, stressing this message of 
positioning yourself as powerless actually really is detrimental to you because it decreases the amount of help that you're given from the spirit world. Whereas when you pray from a position of power, now you're calling in so much more spiritual energy because now your spirit guides won't be enabling powerlessness. They'll be helping you from the authenticity of who you are. Okay, so I hope this, this kind of really, really emphasizes the importance of coming into your power as this is the main difference between praying in religion and spirituality. When it comes to power, coming into your power, this really energetically is a third chakra issue. So that's your solar plexus. I'm pointing here at the top of my stomach. That's where the third chakra is located. Personal power and sovereignty comes energetically from this chakra. And so if you want to learn, if you're watching this video and you're saying, I have no idea, what does it mean to come into my power. I have no idea. You may want to start with third chakra work. And I shot a whole video on that. And I'm going to leave links in the description box below for you to watch after this one. That'll be a great way for you to continue going into how to come into your power. That'll really help for prayer and for everything else in your life. On to step two of our praying technique and that that's to create space. Okay. Now, Creating space can be done in a couple of different ways, okay? You can create actual space in the outside or it could be an internal thing, all right? So when it comes to creating space externally, really what that means is you're going to have a physical space where you pray. So some in the form of an altar, for example, some people like to have praying altars in their house where they have, you know, statues of deities, they have candles, flowers, whatever they want to put on their altar, and then they pray in that location every day. So that's a way for you to create space in the outside world. But another way is to simply create space internally. All right. Creating space internally means that I'm just going to quiet my mind and my intention is going to be to just empty myself out of everything so that I become an empty vessel. All right. Emptying myself out of my problems, the thoughts, the, all of the things that I'm thinking about, my life challenges, my likes, my dislikes, who I think I am. I'm just going to have the intention of dropping, letting go of it all. All right. Just letting go and emptying myself. When you create space this way, what you're doing is emptying yourself out creates, energetically creates a vacuum. All right. And in nature, a vacuum is always filled. Okay. So when I create a vacuum within myself, I'm, a, I'm opening myself up to be filled now filled with what? Well, if I'm praying, obviously what's going to be filled in is going to be source energy is going to stream through answers from my guide signs. There's just going to be a bunch of things that are going to come through from the other side, from the spirit world that has to do with just me surrendering to prayer and letting go of all of this energy and all of these things. When I'm emptying myself out, I create that vacuum of energy. And when I create that vacuum, it's going to be filled with the beautiful energy of source. Okay. So creating space is really important, whether you're doing it externally or inter internally or both at the same time, that's wonderful, but just set, even if it's just a few seconds to close your eyes and take a nice deep breath and just say to yourself, I empty myself out now. So if you're praying in the middle of your day and you're not home, you're not by an altar and you're just sitting in your car, you can do this. You can pray at any time. You don't have to be in special locations. All right. But the creation of space and the emptying myself out helps me with that connection with the divine and in receiving any type of answers or signs from the divine. Step number three is to communicate openly. All right. So a lot of times people think that prayer is only, um, happening when you're reciting these elaborate prayers that are written from thousands of years ago or hundreds of years ago. Okay. And reciting prayer can be really powerful too. Okay. So no judgment on the recital of old prayers that could be really powerful also, but remember that prayer is also a conversation, an open conversation. That's the difference between, uh, spirituality and religion when it comes to prayer. So have your intention to just openly have a conversation with the divine, with your source. I love that. That means that there isn't a prayer that's prepared that you're reciting. You can use recited prayers, and I'm going to share a little bit of one here to help you uh, start understanding how to use that. So you can use written prayers in your life for sure, but you can also pray by having a spontaneous conversation, uh, with, with the divine. Okay. Remember the example that I was talking about, about you going out to coffee with a friend and just having this open, vulnerable conversation 
communicating with your friend. That's literally how you should be praying to, to source energy. That's how you should be communicating with your creator, with God, in the same way, in this beautiful fraternal kind of energy, this beautiful, vulnerable, authentic uh, conversation that you're having as if you're talking to a friend. In my own life, I actually pray in this spontaneous way and in this form of conversation a lot. I, I, I talk to my source a lot. I talk to my spirit guides a lot in this kind of conversational friend to friend kind of kind of uh, communication. So, so that is wonderful. And you can mix the spontaneity of this type of prayer with an actual written prayer if you'd like to. Okay. So if you want to get into reciting a prayer and writing it down and reciting a prayer, I'll give you some tips on how to do that. So tip number one is to learn to write your own. Okay. So you may want to use old prayers that you just recite. Again, nothing wrong with that. There's a lot of power in that too, if you want to, but you can also write your own. And that's so, so powerful because when we write our own prayers, again, it's more authentic because those words are literally coming from us. They're not coming from someone else who wrote them. They're coming from us. Okay. And so the more vulnerable, the more authentic my words are, the more they represent my truth, the more power there is attached to that. Okay. So learn how to write your own prayers. Now, if you're thinking, how the heck do I even start to write my own prayer? I have no idea. I'm going to share with you a prayer that I use and you can start, you could use that as a baseline and start making making your own prayers, but here's the one that one of the, the prayers that I love to use. I, a divine being of God, ask for assistance from my source and all my guides in this issue. I open my energy to receive guidance and answers on how best to proceed. I know that I am loved and assisted in everything I do, and so it is. Okay, this, I love to use this simple prayer. And what you'll notice about writing your own prayer is write in simple sentences. Don't write long, long, long essays. I like to write uh, a prayer kind of poem style with sentences that just break each line. There's a different sentence. Okay. And it's very clear. It's very to the point. That's how I like to write my, my prayers. And sometimes people call these decrees. I love to write decrees. And in this, in this form, this is an example of one. And here, what, what's, what I like to use as the beginning of the prayer is I always like to identify myself in my power. So I'll say, I, you know, a beautiful being of light, or I, a powerful soul from God. However you want to identify yourself on a soul level, that's a great way for you to start your prayer and then go into the topic that you're praying about. Okay, so, so write your own. That's the first tip on working with prayer, with written prayer. The second tip on working with written prayer is to repeat it. Okay, so repetition works really well in just condensing energy and concentrating it and expanding it. The more that I repeat something, the more I'm putting my focus on it, the more the energy expands. Okay. So when I'm working with written prayers, I'll repeat them multiple times over and over and over again until finally I feel like stopping. And then I just sit in that silence. Okay. So learn how to repeat your prayers as a, as a rule of thumb. If you want me to give you a little bit of an example, as a rule of thumb, uh, I tend to repeat my, my prayers at least 10 times. So that'll be a, a good rule of thumb if you want to work with written prayer. Repeat them at, le at least 10 times to strengthen the power of the prayer. Step number four and last step is to focus on the outcome. Okay, so when you're praying from a position of power, now you're as you're praying and as you're having this conversation, you're already feeling and envisioning the outcome. <laughs> Okay. You're already, it's almost like you're in the present moment praying about something, but you're also feeling the outcome of that energy. And this is really, really important. And again, you see the difference here. So in religion, people tend not to do it that way because when they're praying in religion, they're expecting this de deity in the, in, you know, high up in the sky to be able to provide that miracle. Okay. When you pray from a spiritual perspective, you realize that you are a powerful co-creator of your reality. And so when you are praying and asking for assistance or having a conversation with your source, you're also realizing your power as a co-creator of your experience. And so you're already envisioning that situation that you're praying for. You're envisioning it as done. You're envisioning the outcome as done. Okay. 
And this happens a lot through the use of the heart and the mind. So emotions, feeling that uh, already done and, and envisioning that outcome already done. Okay, so this is the last step. Very, very powerful uh, step in being able to effectively pray and to use prayer to your advantage in your daily life. If you want to go beyond prayer and go into the power of positive affirmations, which are kind of associated with prayer, I shot a whole video on that and I'll leave links in the description box below so you can watch after this one. Now I want to hear from you. Do you pray on a regular basis? Let me know in the comments below. Click here to subscribe to my YouTube channel or head over to my website where you can download my popular free guided meditations. And don't forget this video here on affirmations and the one on the solar plexus. That'll be great for you to continue viewing. All right, beautiful soul. That's it for me. I love you. I'm out.